Hi, this is Brian Privet at the University of Iowa. We're here in our wet lab facility. The purpose of this video is to talk about the basics of setting up an ophthalmology wet lab. Here at the University of Iowa, we utilize a laboratory space, which is nice because we have plenty of shelves for storage of all of our uh, instruments and other supplies. We also have an area with a sink for cleaning all of the utensils that we use. Um, we even have a fume hood. Sometimes it's helpful to prepare a fixative for the anterior capsule to make it less elastic. Also, you could prepare fixatives to actually inject into the lens to induce a cataract. We even have a microwave for microwaving a pig eye in order to induce a ca cataract. And then a uh, mini fridge to store the pig eyes itself. So all those things are very helpful to have within your wet lab space. The actual work table itself, what we have is an operating microscope with a teaching scope so that during our instructions, our instructor can, can watch and see what we're doing. We also have all the instruments laid out. The pig eye itself, we have a foam head. And what I like to do is in, in uh, pin the eye down with pins located about where the rectus muscles would be. This allows a little bit of movement during the surgery, not quite as much as you'd actually get in the OR. What I like to do before I start working on a pig eye is to actually lay out the instruments somewhat in the order that I might be using them, for example, for a cataract surgery. So first, you know, if we're making the paracentesis, uh, we have a 75 super sharp blade here, also with a uh, fixation ring to hold in place. You can also use a couple of wet Q-tips if you don't have a fixation ring. And then after the uh, paracentesis is made, you want to fill the eye with either some, um, some sort of viscoelastic, either Helon or Ocucoat, for example. And it's nice when you actually can get the uh, supplies from the OR if you have the expired, but those are rather um, expensive and hard to hang on to. So a nice alternative for a pig eye or a pig lab is to uh, simply use a cannula with some surgical lube. And let me just demonstrate actually filling the cannula. You, you don't want to have any bubbles when you're doing this, otherwise you get air into the eye. And so a little trick that I found to kind of help fill this up is to kind of push from the back of the tube, actually take out the plunger of the syringe, and then push it in and try to get as few bubbles as possible and even kind of push out some of the bubbles toward the end. And then you can simply insert the plunger back. And now you have a, a nice cannula to uh, either simulate Elon or Occupoat with the cannula in place. And then you can label that um, the type of viscoelastic that you want. That way you can use it um, and kind of remind yourself what type of viscoelastic you're inserting as you go. And then after you've sort of injected some viscoelastic, you can move on. This is a uh, crescent blade for making your clear corneal incision. And then a cystotome, you trot a forceps for making your capsule rexus. There's also a BSS cannula for um, doing hydro dissection, which for this you can also just use saline or water. And then we just have various other instruments for later on in the case. Perhaps if you want to throw some corneal sutures at the end, we, can, we have plenty of suturing supplies as well as needle holders and different types of forceps. And then the last thing that's important to have in your wet lab facility is a FACO machine. And uh, this particular FACO machine is the Alcon Legacy. The things you need to operate the FACO machine are a cassette, and usually the cassettes come in a package like this, and they contain the uh, actual cassette and all the tubing that you need. Um, they also contain the FACO handpiece tips, and it's a good idea that after you place this onto the uh, ultrasound handpiece that you keep the little plastic um, container, because that's what allows you to take it off again and unscrew it, so make sure to hold on to that. To get started here, you want to insert the cassette on the side of the machine and just push that in like so, so that the fluid will drain there. And then the pieces of tubing that go to the handpiece itself, in order to start and prime the pump, you need to have these pushed together. And the last thing to do is take the actual bottle tube and push that in there. Kind of push on the plastic so that that starts draining. And then hang that from the bottle hanger. Now one of the first things that it's going to ask you to do in order to start the machine is to actually prime the machine. And you can see here it says not primed. 
I'm going to hit test. Actually prime the machine here. And it's going to run through some steps to prime the pump. On this particular pump, the surgeon that's selected when you turn on the machine is just set to the system default. But if you did actually want to select a surgeon, you could hit the custom button and select one of the pre-programmed surgeon settings. And if at one point in time you forget what to do, we actually do have a quick setup guide that kind of leads you through the steps that you need to do in order to do all the priming, tuning, and the cleaning for the machine. Now that we have our FACO machine primed, what we'll do is insert the um, ultrasound handpiece. So you can simply take the pieces apart and put them in their respective holes. And now you have to prime or tune the instrument to make sure that the ultrasound cap is on. And you push tune and that will tune the instrument. Now another important thing about running a wet lab is to make sure that everyone is cleaning up after themselves so that the next person is able to use it well. And so one of the functions of the FACO machine is actually cleaning the machine. And so in order to do that, you actually hit test again and then the clean function. And what the clean function will do is sort of flush the system out. And then after you're done with the clean function, you can take your ultrasound handpiece off, put the pipes back together. The ultrasound handpiece itself can come off. And a simple way to clean this is just to simply take off the FACO tip and then run water through the ends of the handpieces to sort of keep it clean. You don't just want to leave it connected to the tubing and on the machine when you're not using it. And then also, once you turn off the machine, the bottle can come down and you can actually just pull out the cassette and dispose of it in a biohazard waste area. Another thing I want to mention about cleaning is that if you do use any surgical lube and any cannulas, if you leave these um, overnight, the cannulas will gunk up with the surgical lube. So it's always a good idea to take these off, um, rinse them out or soak them in water to keep them clean. Otherwise, you'll have to have new ones. And if you have a tip for the um, syringe, you can actually just cap that and then you have it ready to use for next time. And then, of course, you just want to make sure that you clean up all the utensils as well as all the dishes that you use so that the next person can come into a nice, clean wet lab. And last, I just want to talk about how you get the supplies that you need for your wet lab. Uh, first off, the FACO machine. Um, this particular machine we used to use in our OR before we upgraded, so it was nice that we were able to hang on, that, hang on to that for the wet lab. Uh, you might need to ask your local FACO machine provider if they have any older machines that you could use for your wet lab. Also, for the FACO machines, you do need the cassettes, um, and sometimes you can get those from your FACO machine provider or from extras in the OR as well. One easy thing that is to get is the BSS bottles, and it's good to ask your scrub techs and nurses if they can save extra bottles from OR cases and make sure you sort of bring them up to the wet lab, especially bottles that are greater than the half full. Another thing that uh, you need to try and get for your wet lab or good instruments. Um, sometimes you can get instruments that are slightly bent or less than perfect from either sterile processing or just by reminding your uh, scrub techs and nurses to keep, a, keep an eye out for less than perfect instruments. And then here in Iowa, we're pretty fortunate that we have a steady supply of pig eyes from local slaughterhouses, but in other places where it's more difficult to get pig eyes, uh, it is possible to order eyes on the internet for use in the wet lab facility. So hopefully this video has been helpful for some of the basic tools that you need to set up your ophthalmology wet lab. And I would just encourage you to keep everything clean, collect supplies all the time, and then use it often and have fun. Thanks for watching.